Welcome to the Simply Real Life podcast. I'm Sarah, the founder of Simply Real Health, here to help you simplify, amplify, and elevate your life. This show is for those of you who want the real talk on how to live a more intuitive and intentional life, a life that's healthy from the inside out, and one that feels more effortless, aligned, simple, and more alive. We cover it all from health, wellness, mindset, motherhood, daily habits and rituals, to business and relationships, creativity and growth, and tiny tricks to feeling your best and the energetics behind it all. All filled with personal stories, unfiltered conversations, and of course, answering all of your burning questions, all in the way of simplicity and keeping it real so that you can create your own version of your healthiest life. Let's do it. Hi guys, welcome back to the podcast. This week we've got a good one, especially as we are starting a brand new year. And as you know, I am a big fan of taking it slow, taking this entry into both a new year and a new season, just not rushing. I feel like there's so much rush and so much pressure around New Year specifically, around intentions and goal setting. And if you listen to the last episode, you know this and you know my process behind both reflecting on the year and then how I enter a new year thinking about the bigger picture, thinking about the full year ahead. In the episode, I also mentioned that I still do my seasonal intention settings, even after I've gone through the full year one for myself, I still really like to do and still commit to doing smaller ones each season. So just as if you've listened to the fall intentions episode, If not, that may be helpful to go back and listen to. But in today's episode, I wanted to share what my winter intentions are. And I think that will give a really good example of how these really do switch season to season. And not only how it takes the overwhelming thing of looking at the entire year and feeling like you have to do all these things that you want to be doing for the entire year and like you have to do them all in January, this secondary process for me helps me to slow my roll a little bit and think, okay, what comes first? Of all those things that I'm declaring for the whole year, what things are the most important or the things that come first? Like, how am I going to start the year? And when I sat down to think these through and write them down, a lot of them surprised me because a lot of them are very different actually than the things that I'm thinking about for the year. So I would just encourage you to do the same and see what comes out when you're just thinking about this winter season. So for me, living in Seattle, it's definitely January, March, maybe a little bit of April, like spring doesn't really hit till later. So we definitely have these three juicy months ahead that have an entirely different energy than any other time of the year. So this is just a way to embrace that. And I think doing this ahead of time helps you really tap into the feeling that you're wanting to feel this season. Like thinking about your priorities, of course, but the feeling that you want to feel. And as always, I know I have talked about this so many times. If you can focus on that feeling instead of things that you're checking off a list, by the time that you get through that season, focusing on feelings, because so many different activities and so many different little things that you can do throughout the day can create that feeling. Versus when you're just checking one thing, like a goal or an accomplishment off your list, that's only one way to get there. So I just find it gives a little bit more flexibility too. And in this stage of my life, personally, I need that. And I need lots of different ideas that are almost pre-decided for me before I get into a season, especially one like winter where it is dark, it is cold, it is rainy, it is gray, especially living where I live. I have to put some work and some thought into what do I want this to be? How can I make this a magical season? How can I make this something that does feel so worthwhile doing? And even though it's an entirely different energy than my favorite season, which is summer, how can I embrace it more? Like what things can I do to celebrate it, whether that's focusing on different foods or the things that I'm cooking in my kitchen or little afternoon activities that I'm doing with the kids or whether it's my nightly routine. So I have a bunch of different areas of my life that I like to start with. First, though, defining what I want my winter vibe to be. I thought it might be helpful to share this and knowing 
that you can take the same process and think through what this might be for you. Doing this ahead of time helps prevent a lot of getting into the season and getting either swept away by all this pressure or all of these outside sources and noise versus what actually going to feel the most aligned to you. So here we go. These are some of my winter intentions. My winter vibe, I'm just going to say it, is slow and peace-inducing and the sense of ease and coziness and a little bit more going internal. So that process of rest and reflection and re-evaluation, that's really what winter is about. And I think about the time I started to understand, like, this is the point of winter. If we were living in summer energy all year long, we would be completely burned out, completely. And so there's this natural rhythm that the seasons give us where they have a different energy to it. We need points of rest and reflection and peace and ease. I mean, especially after the holiday season, this is the opposite of that. It's this natural rhythm built in to help us stay balanced. So thinking about those words, like the overall winter vibe, it's slow and peace inducing. And then, you know, I always find it so helpful to, okay, what are some other words that will help my brain remember that feeling? So those are the words, peace, ease, coziness, internal rest, reflection, and reevaluation. That is what this season is going to be all about for me. So then I start working through my list of all the major life areas and trying to think through what would be examples of that feeling of slow, peace-inducing, maybe a little bit of cocooning, maybe a little bit of the reflection kind of feel to it. So in the category of work for me, my really big intention for this work season, the next couple of months, is to be reevaluating and reflecting on all of our systems, all the back end. Are there things that we are still doing because that's the way we've always done them? Are they actually working? Are people able to find the things that they need? Are we still doing things that I thought would be helpful, but maybe there's a new technology or better, more efficient ways to do things? So in terms of work and for Simply Real Health, that is a major thing that I'm going to be taking the next couple months to do. And it's needed. You know, you need to do that at least once a year to be pausing, reflecting, and not just going through the motions or in autopilot mode. And I think this is a really good season to do it. Also, it's all about cooking. This is cooking season. And so or in terms of a work context, it is all about cooking. It's all about recipes. We have a huge sale coming up for the cooking club because it's the biggest time of year where most of us get stuck and we're making the same things or maybe not feeling so great from the holidays or feeling a little lost and not sure quite what to do, what to make. It's just you're making the same things over and over again and really losing that inspiration and creativity. And so for me, this is prime cooking season where it is fun because what else is there to do when it's cold outside and it gets dark so early? It's the perfect time to be learning new recipes, trying some different things out, using it as a time where this can be an activity. This can be like a hobby that you take up no matter where you are on the spectrum of feeling like you are a good cook or not, this is such a perfect season to be learning a little bit more, something new, a new technique, a, how to use your Instant Pot, how to make soups, how to roast veggies that come out perfect every time. What are some new, maybe five to 10 new recipes that you could start incorporating? Maybe you just try one new one a week or two a week. So I think a lot of my heart and time and energy goes into encouraging people. You don't need to stay stuck. You don't need to feel frustrated. You don't need to feel like you might as well just give up and order takeout. I think there's so much that can be taught around eating food that is really healthy for you, but also really simple and really easy and quick. Like I'm talking 10 minutes to prep dinner. That's really all I do. And finding ways to teach people about those types of recipes and sharing what I'm doing and really working on a lot of the misconceptions around cooking that it has to take forever, that you have to be planning it out way in advance. You have to be super organized. I don't think any of those things are true. Really, I think helping people realize there's so many other options and it's such a great way to 
incorporate a little bit more play and lightheartedness and more of that childlike joy. And where it's not about being perfect or nailing every recipe, or it's just about the process of teaching your brain something new. Okay, in my role as a mom, this is what I'm envisioning is that this season is going to be so much more about these small, cozy, or intentional moments, which I always feel like every season this is a part of it for me. But what the thing I'm really wanting to focus on is letting them lead a little bit more in playtime or activities or letting them call the shots versus me. And what I tend to do now is provide two or three ideas or an activity or like I have my hand in like, oh, maybe we could do this or do you guys want to go go do that? But having a little bit more of that unstructured playtime where my phone's not there, my phone is away, and we're figuring out things to do together when it's dark and cold out, which requires a lot of creativity. So if I can think about this in terms of I'm going to really work on my creativity this season, I'm also going to work on letting them be more creative. So I think the two go hand in hand in my mind. And something sort of random that I will add to this is that I have this goal of like, in order to make those things happen, what really needs to happen is that I need to be putting my phone in a completely different room as soon as I'm done with work for the day, all the way through dinner and through bedtime. Right now, I have it on me. I am checking in on things, but I really don't want to be doing that. And I don't need to be doing that. I think it's just a habit that I do, that my brain is always on and I'm always thinking through things or just wanting to check something really quick and then get back to playing or reading or whatever we're doing. But I really want to work on that because I just don't think that probably feels good to them. They've noticed when I'm not fully with them, and I don't think it's practical to be always fully with them. There's a lot more going on in our lives where that's not always feasible, but I do think it would be feasible for at least 30 minutes of that afternoon time to really be there and really be not distracted in any way. And that's something I definitely need to work on for sure. So this is my season to do it because there's likely going to be a lot more close quarters and figuring out some other alternative things to do. And if I don't have that option of checking something really quick, I think will lead to a whole different feel. But, you know, TBD, maybe they don't even notice and maybe it doesn't matter, but I'm going to test it out. I'll let you know. Okay, in my role as a wife and as somebody who really prioritizes and wants to keep prioritizing my marriage, even though life is chaotic with two kids, this is something that always comes top of my mind. What else could we be doing? So I think something that would be really fun, and I know that Kyle's on board for this, is learning something new together, like either taking a class or reading a book together, or even just picking out one podcast to listen to each week where we can listen separately and then talk about it. And we can alternate who sends the other one one, but just little ways of connecting outside of our role as mom and dad and our role as a family. So that's something I want to do more. We both love learning and we've gotten out of the practice of it or it's been a little bit more random, the things that we're learning and talking about and growing in that way. So that is my intention there. In terms of afternoon, I like to think about like my afternoon time, my morning time, my evening time. Is there anything that I want to do or switch up in my current little routine that is more seasonal or more focused on these words I'm trying to cultivate. So in my afternoon routine, what I want to do is light all the candles. I have these amazing little non-toxic tea lights and light all the candles when it gets dark. So that could be like 3.30 these days or, you know, 4 p.m., but light them all. It just feels magical and cozy and, I don't know, really embraces the darkness of the season, which is all about being more internal, turning inwards, reflecting, just resting. And I just love the feel of that. I'm also going to be making a little winter bucket list as I have done before in the fall and then through the holiday season, like I shared on Instagram. I'll get a big printable calendar and then come up with a bunch of ideas that are somewhat doable in this season. That really helps me, I think, specifically in that late afternoon time before dinner when I am with our kids primarily and having a little idea or something that's fun to do. And 
it helps that Noah loves checking them off. He's like, all right, like what, what else we got? So just creating little activities that are these little moments or memories or who knows, maybe they won't remember, but it feels good to do something together like that. So one of the things I was like, what could we do when we can't be doing huge walks or bike rides? Well, we could still put on rain suits and rain boots and go out and do puddle jumping. That would, I'm sure, be really fun for them. But even things like, what if we did like a little kids yoga class, like once a week or so, where we were all doing it together and just move the coffee table out. Just things like that, where I'm like, oh, it's fun. It's different. They may like it. They may not. But having that list, I think, ready to go before I'm in the moment of what do we do for this next hour? And maybe the answer is just letting them lead, you know, letting them play a little more. You can see how my brain works. But having that available saves so much of that, oh no, that panic, what should we do? Um, Especially when it's so weather dependent this time of year. Okay, in my evening routine, I think my main focus is going to be aside from putting my phone away from dinner to bedtime, but just getting into bed early. And this to me is like, this is prime reading season. It's cooking season and it's reading season. And so really embracing that. I feel like the older I get, the more my capacity for reading grows. And I think maybe that's becoming a mom too. There's so much stimulation during the day that at night, there's nothing better like curling up by the fire putting on my cozy robe or getting in bed and really embracing going to sleep early. It's like a bear. It's like hibernation season. And so if that's something I want to do is read a lot and and maybe do that a full half hour or hour before I would normally get in bed and just read to fall asleep. So prioritizing. Okay, for my physical body, physical health, I this is something I'm pulling in from the other seasons because I am loving it. And that is to keep going with Pilates. It has helped my back so much. I no longer have to do PT. I'm no longer in pain. And I finally feel strong again after having two kids. So this has been like a game-changing thing, not only because it gets me out of the house and that I'm doing something for myself, even if it's only, it's a 45-minute class, it's five minutes away, and it's practical, and it's doable, and it's quick, and I feel great, and I love focusing at this stage in my life on strength and on muscle. How can I keep those two things going strong? Because as we age, we lose so much muscle every single year if we are not constantly working on building it. So that I think is going to be something that stays around in my life, whether that's weight training or it's doing my TRX traps or doing Pilates. But that focus on strength specifically is something I'm definitely focusing on, um, as well as doing my walks even in the rain. It doesn't matter. Get a good umbrella. Get waterproof boots. I have like waterproof hiking boots that have changed the game so I no longer have soggy feet. It is truly the worst. So that was such a big shift for me, I think, five years ago when I got that. I got a good coat and, you know, gloves and a hat and you're good. And it just feels so good to get fresh air. So even though the weather's not great, I am not going to let that stop me. I always find that the physical body is so tied to mental health and having this positive outlook and connection between your physical body and your mental health. I mean, the two are the same thing. So the things I was laughing as I wrote them for my mental health are also the same, going to Pilates, taking walks. And then the third thing is using my red light. So my red light mask that I was so annoying about all through December because I just got this mask and it's cordless and it has eye holes. So with my other previous red light, which I still love, but that's more of a intentional meditation red light, I would say. And you have to wear goggles for it. This is just opening up a whole world of other possibilities where I can do it during my morning foam rolling and I can do it during my stretches. Or I could do it at night doing the dishes or laying in bed reading. Like it's a little bit more flexible. So I am loving having that option and it's something I really do want to focus on is my skin health and skin care and definitely just being super proactive about wanting to keep my skin as healthy and plump and glowing as possible even though I'm aging. So that is definitely something that I would be focusing on probably every day and I'm sorry it was getting annoying how much I post about it but it's helpful Physically, you get all those benefits, anti-aging, inflammation, reducing cellular health, regeneration, collagen production, and mentally, it's so relaxing and it's warm 
And it gives me an excuse to take 10 minutes to listen to a meditation or to stretch or to just enjoy that process. In the category of nervous system, this is an entire category for me because I have found that if you don't have something that you're doing to regulate and take care of your nervous system every season, you will feel way out of balance, even if you're doing all the things for your physical health and your mental health. Not focusing on nervous system regulation is one of the biggest mistakes I see people making or that they're, they're doing everything else, but they still feel like they're constantly overwhelmed, stressed out, like their brains can't turn off, they're not sleeping great, need a ton of caffeine, all of that stuff. So for me, this season, this looks like taking a lot of baths, Epsom salt baths. Again, reading is also just very calming, relaxing for my brain. I'm bringing back just more meditation in my life. I feel like it's such a great season for that because it's something that definitely does help rest and ease and just that sense of like internal peace. So with that, the next one I have is breathing also before eating. I think I put this on for every different season because it just feels so different in each season, depending the foods you're eating and the environment that you're in while eating them, like inside versus outside or on the go versus mostly at home. And so that reminder to myself of just taking those couple deep breaths before eating really, really impacts how you digest your food. The more relaxed your nervous system is, the easier it is for your body to digest your food and assimilate it and process it and break it down. If you are always stressed out, you likely have gut issues going on. It is all connected. And because I have had so many of those things go on in the past, like digestive issues in general, that it's really a big priority to remember that connection and to remember to be always doing something for my nervous system. I need something probably once a day, at least. Some people are different, but something every day where it's a reminder. It's usually around bedtime for me because that's the time that I've been just going all day. And I need that reminder to physically bring things down a notch. Okay, in terms of fun and joy and things that I want to be doing, I mean, this is hilarious, but travel, like getting out of the winter like weather is something that is in our plans for sure. And also a really big focus for me is on friends and community. So hosting and having girls nights at my house doesn't need to be fancy, complicated, doesn't need to be something that's a lot of high pressure, but inviting my friends over more often and even last minute stuff and really focusing on those relationships. Because I also think that in the winter season, people get super disconnected and you're like, hey, how are you doing? Even to people that might live close to you or that you see often, but you don't get the chance to do deeper dives. Even if it's things like voice texting and Marco Polo with a few specific people, I am so overwhelmed by Marco Polo, by the way. I my friends love it. And I'm like, oh, that's just another app, another thing. Oh, it's a lot. But I do think it has its place, especially if we are going to be traveling or gone, that having those points of connection and really focusing for me on just friends and community is really important to me this season. Okay. The last one, of course, is food. And this one is sort of obvious, but is is all just about warming, cozy foods that feel like a hug. I don't know a better way to say that, but just foods that are really nourishing and grounding and calming and they're packed with nutrients, so they're so satisfying. But also they have these different elements that feel really maybe decadent or more rich than maybe they really are. So I think there's a lot of ways that can look and a lot of ways that can happen. I mean, it's absolutely soup season, but I also mean things like roasted veggies and experimenting a little bit more with my Instant Pot. That's not just only soup, but what other things could I do in there too? So that is really going to be one of my focuses this winter season for sure. So I hope that this gets your brain going and thinking of what you want to be focusing on might be for you. And they could look similar to mine. I mean, I think there's just an element of the energetics of winter where it is trying to embrace, even if you don't love being more quiet and more internal, it's usually so good for us. I think when we do and giving ourselves that space to actually reflect before we're constantly on the go and 
doing new things and pushing forward and on to the next thing, but really taking some time to at least think, is this actually working? Is this having the effect that I want? Is this still feeling good? Is this still something that is worth doing or not? And I think without those times and those seasons to be more quiet, it just really can feel so out of balance if we don't. This is me just personally trying to embrace winter, trying to find the fun and the joy. And I think specifically with this stage of life that I am in personally, where our kids are still really young and they're not doing tons of activities and we're not quite to the stage where we can all go out and go skiing together. Let's say they're still pretty young. I think it's finding the things that we can do, the things we can focus on, the things that do feel like they uplift you and give you little sprinkles of light through a season that can feel a little dark. But I oftentimes think that that's exactly the point, is that when the season is dark and when things are more quiet, that it helps us really start focusing on how can we create our own light? How can we create these feelings, these sparks of joy, these special little moments, how can we help ourselves feel really good no matter what's going on outside or what the weather is? We can really have such an impact on our own experience day to day. We just have to be aware of it and intentional about it and really proactive about creating those things, creating those moments, nailing down on what create those feelings so that we can become better crafters of what our days actually feel like, which in turn creates how our lives actually feel. So I hope this was helpful to listen to. And I would love to hear what yours are too. And even as your brain is going right now, what could they be? What words you're wanting to cultivate this season? What feelings do you want to create? I would love to hear about them. So come find me on Instagram at Simply Real Health. You can send me a DM. You can comment on our post about this episode. But I hope that you are having a great start to your year, and I hope that this helps you take a second to really reflect before just barreling into the season and who knows what it will hold. We never know what things will hold, but I think having this sort of thing ready really helps our confidence and really helps us anticipate the season in a really positive way and get excited for all the things that it will bring. I love you guys so much, and I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. If you enjoyed this episode and want more like it, make sure you're subscribed to the Simply Real Life podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, and maybe share it with a friend or two. That would mean the world. 